six four spin senior Dale Kluster. Number forty five at center, six five senior Mike Miller. Number forty one at guard, six two junior Jim Kinney. Number twenty one at guard, six one senior John Eisen. Coach of the Fulton team, Stan Borgman. And now it'll be the Fulton Steamers wearing the dark uniform. They're wearing a black with a red and white trim. And of course, Kalen in the white with an orange and black trim. If you're watching in color, we hope you are. And we're just about ready to get this quarterfinal game underway. Ray Scott is here. Ed McCauley's here. I'm Bob Starr, and the tip goes over. By Kalen coming out with it was Kirk Pressey. On the move is Kevin Peterson, a 5'10 senior. They move it around. Peterson underneath. The tip up is no good and brought down out of there. And Fulton comes out with it is Mark Miller, 6'5 senior center. Gets it out and they move it up court. With the ball is Jim Kenny. They work around this zone thrown up by Kalen. Kenny with the ball. Into the right corner. And that is Steve Workman. Back out to Kenny. Gets away. The steal picked up by Ron Ackerman. He's only a sophomore, six footer. One of the guards for Kalen. On the give and go, they couldn't make it work. Kevin Peterson misses the shot, and coming out with it on the rebound is John Eisen. He's a six-one senior. Jim Kenny with the ball. Well, Fulton Eisen. And a foul is called on John Eisen for charging violation. Picks up his first and the first for Fulton. Bob Kalen uh, in a pressing man-to-man -man situation. It looks like both clubs, uh, Fulton, use a, a trap zone defense on uh, when they're when they are on defense. But this is a man-to-man -man situation. It looks like we're going to have a contrast of the two defenses in the early going. Kevin Peterson worked it around off to Kirk Cressy. Cressy hemmed in and he can't get a shot up. It's going to be a jump ball. Kirk Pressey wearing number 30 in the white for Kalen. He'll be jumping with number 25, Steve Workman, a 6'2 senior forward for Fulton. Tip is controlled and taken out of there by Kevin Peterson. Down the right side off to Steve Lynch. Nobody can find the hole right now. Mark Miller brings it out for Fulton as they come back up on the offense. They're a little tight, Ed McCauley. Yes, this afternoon in the first game, uh, both clubs were a little tight. And, they, and you can understand it. Uh, you're looking at, what, 14, 15,000 people? I don't think they play in uh, front of this kind of a crowd every night, Bob. Mark Miller for Fulton. Rimmed it. Out of there, no good. Brought down by Bill Sambrook, the big 6'5 senior center. Fulton's first shot at the bucket tonight, and it didn't go in. We have no score with 6.08 to play in this first quarter. Our quarterfinal game between Fulton and Kalen. Kalen's in the white, Fulton in the dark. On the move with the ball, Kirk Cressy. Back out. Ron Ackerman hands one. And Kalen takes the early lead at 552 of the first quarter. Jim Kenny for Fulton. Back around the horn, they move with John Eisen. On the pop, the two is Steve Workman, and it's tied. Full court press put up now by Fulton. Ackerman tries to work for Kalen. Top of the key, and that is Sam Brooks. Back to Ackerman. Three second violation. Called against Kalen. It'll be Fulton putting it in play. So we have a 2 2 score, 5 22 to play in the first period. As far as Fulton coming down against the zone really hasn't seemed to uh, come up with a pattern. It's, as I said before, a trap zone. You notice how they try to cut off the passes just as they did there. They're not trying to take the ball away from the man. They're trying to move between the passing lanes, get their hands up, try to deflect the ball, and they've done it two or three times thus far. With the play is Jim Kenny. Or John Eisens, I should say, number 21. Eisens. Over to Kenny. They're having some trouble with this Canelan zone. Now they finally get it underneath and taking it as Dale Twister. He puts his shot up and no good. The tip is good. We'll give it to Steve Workman. It's always the problem with a zone. It's tough to pick up your man defensively on the rebounds, and you'll find the offensive, you can get offensive tips against the zone defense. 
Four points for Steve Workman and four points for Fulton. They lead 4-2 over Kalen. We're in the early, early going. Four minutes, 36 seconds to play and counting here in the first period. With the ball is Kevin Peterson now for Kalen. The Kalen Knights, coached by George Burkett. We have a jump ball. It'll be called and taken to the free throw line to jump. It'll be between Kevin Peterson, number 12, for Kalen, and number 41, Jim Kenny, the 6'2 junior for Fulton. The Fulton Steamers, the Kalen Knights. It was controlled by Mark Miller for Fulton. Off to Kenny, and Jim Kenny moves it up into the forecourt. And notice that Kevin Peterson, uh, number 12, the uh, smallest man for Kalen, is really in deep on his own. He's under the boards. They play a 1 3 1, and thus far, they've been very effective with it. Traveling a violation, a turnover, and it'll be Kalen putting it in play. Kevin Peterson has it, taking it from Ron Ackerman. Peterson on a charging violation. Kevin Peterson picks up his first personal foul of the night, and number one on Kalen as a team. The score stands at 4 2, with Bolton out in front of Kalen. Four minutes, 13 seconds to play. Putting it in play is Jim Kenny. Off to John Eisens. Eisens around the horn. Back out to Kenny. Cross court pass over to Steve Workman. He has all four points. But John Eisens tries his luck, no good. Picked off the floor and taken out of there by Steve Lynch. Steve Lynch, by the way, is Kalen's leading scorer with a 14.5 per game average. He scored 435 points this season. Peterson working around the horn. Off to Kirk Pressey. Ron Ackerman in the right corner now for Kalen. Timeout will be called. And it's timeout in the first quarter with the score. Fulton 4, Kalen 2. Two over Kalen and Ed McCauley and Ray Scott. It has been a cool night for both teams. Kalen's hit one out of five. Fulton two out of five. Ten shots and four and a half minutes of play so far. Sounds like the way I used to shoot, Ray. <laughs> Ron Ackerman puts it in play, and Bill Sambrooks comes out to meet it. They give it back to Kevin Peterson. Working it down the right side off to Steve Lynch, their leading scorer. Ackerman, top of the key. They rotate out in front off to Kevin Peterson again. Bob Kamen and probably a control ball club. Uh, Steve Lynch, their leading scorer, just over 14 points a game. Bill Sambrooks at 13. But other than that, they don't have anyone in double figures, which uh, normally would indicate that they are a uh, control type. They're looking for the good shot. On the other hand, Fulton, uh, Steve Workman over 14 a game, Mike Miller over 17, Jim Kinney at 12 points a game, John Eisen's at 11 points a game. They have a more balanced attack. Three second violation gave the ball to Fulton as they move it up. Eisen's with the ball. Into the corner, and this is to Jim Kinney. Back out to John Eisen's, to Kinney from outside. Kenny picks up his first two of the night, and Fulton takes a 6-2 lead over Kalen. Fulton stays in kind of a loose press, not a real harassing type of press. Ron Ackerman off to Steve Lynch for Kalen. Ackerman behind the screen. Can't get it in the hole. Lynch gets it out. Back out underneath to Lynch. And finds the range. Picks up his first two of the evening. As I say, Steve Lynch is their leading scorer at 14-5 per game over the season. It's 6-4. to four. Fulton out in front by two over Kalen. Our first quarterfinal game of the evening. Coming up, Bloomington Central Catholic against Venice in the evening's finale. Underneath the Steve Workman tries to work his way, but he took a step or two too many to get in the that's lane. A, that's a problem about playing against a zone like this. You're open for a second, you make a move, all of a sudden the four, guy, four guys <laughs> around you, and now you're walking all over the place. Where'd they come from? <laughs> Ron Ackerman tries to move down court for Kalen. He's successful. Down to Steve Lynch. Underneath the Sam Brooks, they go on the give and go and make it work and tie it at 147 of the first quarter, 6-6. Six, six. Sam Brooks picking up his first two of the evening. Jim Kenny, John Eisens. Down the left side, Dale Pooster is the man underneath. Drives a shot, no good. Mark Miller follows, tries to go down, but somebody touched the net. Are we going to get a two-pointer out of this? We will. Interference will be the call. And the two points will go to Mark Miller, I believe. Theory behind that, Bob, of course, if you can touch the net, you could jump up and grab it and shake the rim. So once you touch the net, it's uh, two points. Bolton out in front, 8-6 by two. Kalen in the white. Kevin Peterson down the left side goes off to Kirk Press. Pressy. 
underneath to Sam Brook. Pulled off of there. Coming up with it is John Eisen's for Fulton. They lead by 2-8-6. A low scoring first period of play with 1-11 to play in the first quarter. Steve Workman all the way out to Eisen's. Kluster's shot rims. Miller with the follow and it is no good. Brought down out of there by Sam Brooks and Kalen's back on the offense. Kevin Peterson trying to find the long man. Steve Lynch for the lead pass intercepted by Mark Miller. And Steve Workman brings it back up the floor for Fulton. The Fulton Steamers in the black uniform with the red and white trim. They lead by two, 8-6, 43 seconds to play. From out front is Jim Kinney, long 20-footer. Gives him a four-point lead, 10-6. Jim Kinney picks up his fourth point of the night. Ron Ackerman now for Caneland. Finds folks around him. Underneath off to Sam Brooks, he loses control of it. He was called for traveling violation before as he tried to get the shot away. And it'll be Fulton putting it in play with 27 seconds to play in the first period. Fulton out in front, 10-6. Probably go for one shot, Bob. There, they've got 24 seconds. There's no sense giving up the ball. Let's see what they do. Workman with it, underneath to Miller. Try to go for the Sherwin. Can't do it. Sam Brooks comes out with the rebound for Kalen. And Bob, this gives uh, this gives Kalen the opportunity. They would have had the opportunity to get the shot. Now it goes the other way. Steal was made from behind and back with the shot. Is John Eisen as the buzzer sounds, and that is the end of the first quarter with the score: Fulton ten, Kaneland six. In almost every area, Kaneland beat Ottawa Marquette. Uh, I guess Ottawa was the top-ranked Class A team. They beat them 37 to 35 to get to the quarterfinals here at Champaign-Urbana. Uh, Fulton beat Bushnell Prairie City 38-37. Kalen with the ball. That's Ron Ackerman. Ackerman is a six-foot sophomore. Steve Lynch with it. Their leading score with 14 plus. Picks up two. Makes it 10-8. Steve Lynch gets his fourth point of the night. Pulls it up by two now. We're in the second period of play. This is Jim Kenny. Out to John Eisen's for Fulton. They work it around the horn. Over to Workman. Into the corner to Kenny. On the rebound taken by Kevin Peterson. Didn't even have to leave his feet. Just picked it off in the air. Coming up is Ron Ackerman now. In the white, that is Kaneland. Ackerman off to Kirk Cressy. Back out to Ackerman. Kevin Peterson. It's hemmed in on the sideline. Now moves it down to Lynch. Looking for Bill Sambrooks underneath. Can't go there and comes back out to Ackerman. Who pots it a little shy. It'll be picked off in midair by Mark Miller in a three-second violation or foul. We have a foul call. It's on Steve Workman of Fulton. And Workman picks up his first personal foul of the night. And number two on Fulton as a team in this first half. So there'll be no shooting until each team, one or the other, reaches four. Ackerman inbounds the ball out to Steve Lynch. Off to Kevin Peterson. 10-8. Fulton by two over Kaneland. Bill Sambrooks from 15. Finds the range. 6-5 senior Bill Sambrooks. He's their center. Ties it up at 10 now with 6.46 to play in the first half. Thus far, Bob, Fulton has not been able to get inside the Caneland zone. You'll notice the ball is going around the outside constantly. There's a hole right in the middle at the free throw line. But if they would have someone there, they... there's another violation. Backcourt violation, another turnover for Fulton. And Caneland picks up the ball at midcourt. Ron Ackerman will put it in play. In the second quarter with the score tied. Fulton 10, Caneland 10. Ball tournament. Caneland against Fulton. Tied up at 10-10. Caneland hit 5 out of 12 from the field. Fulton 5 out of 14 from the field. It'll be Fulton putting it in play. Number 4 is Ron Ackerman. He's only a sophomore. Off to Kevin Peterson as they move it down to the forecourt. The defensive man is Steve Workman now on Peterson. Down to Lynch. Steve Lynch moving against Mark Miller. Underneath to Peterson, kept up and away and taken out of the air by Dale Pluster for Fulton. So the Fulton Steamers come back on the offense with the chance to break the tie. Down to John Eisens. Double team, gets his jump pass back out to Steve Workman. Eisens comes out to take it, and they'll start it over again from the top of the key. You notice, Bob, every time... Every time Fulton puts the ball on the floor, they bounce through, they hesitate on the pass, that Caneland... Uh, the zone adjusts immediately. They're going to have to move the ball faster, I believe, if they're going to break it down. 
Kevin Peterson down to Kirk Cressy. Makes his drive successful, a whistle on the play, and a foul on Mike Miller of Fulton, picking up his first, the third as a team. The basket does count. It puts Caneland up by two and gives them a chance for a three-point play as Kirk Cressy picks up his first two points of the night for Caneland. And that's a fine play. Cressy just took it and he beat him. Just uh, went right down the baseline and beat him. At a seven point plus average on the season, hits the free throw, and Kalen's up by three with 5.38 to play in the first half. Gives him three points on the night. Kirk Cressy up court. John Eisen's off to Jim Kenny for Fulton. They still work against this Kalen zone. A 1 3 1, as Ed McCauley described it. It's a tough one, too. They play it well underneath to Mike Miller. Tries with the fadeaway, makes it good, pulls Fulton to within one at 13-12. Now Kalen by a point, and Fulton will go back and press a little tighter this time. A turnover as it goes off the foot of Kirk Pressey and Kalen. It'll be put in play midway down the left-hand side of the court. John Eisen is to put it in play for Fulton. Last time they got the ball inside to Miller. They were successful with it. See if they concentrate on that. Traveling violation, another turnover for Fulton. And Kalen gets another break with a one-point lead. They'll put it in play in the backcourt. Bolton stays back with them. Off to Bill Sambrooks. They try to break this press. Off to Kevin Peterson. Peterson guarded by Jim Kenny. This is Cressy. Back out to Peterson. Peterson finds a little opening with no luck. Out of bounds. Off. Kalen. It'll be Bolton putting it in play. Kalen has scored seven straight points. Kenny back out to John Eisen's for Fulton. Kenny again off to Steve Workman. Looks for Mark Miller underneath. Can't find him. Double teamed. Has to move it back out in front again. John Eisen's. He'll start it around Horn again. Clooster into the corner. Jim Kenny for two. Jim Kenny picks up the field goal. Gives him six points on the night. And makes it 14 13. Fulton out in front by one. This is Kirk Cressy. Being guarded by Steve Workman. With the ball is Ron Ackerman now for Kalen. Off to Kevin Peterson. To Kirk Cressy. That's number 30. Kevin Peterson underneath. Tender for Steve Lynch. And Lynch, I think, was fouled underneath the bucket. He was. The foul will go to Jim Kinney. Kinney picks up his first personal foul. Or check it. John Eisens picks up his first, second personal foul of the night. And number four on Fulton as a team. So after this, they will be going to the free throw line. Kevin Peterson on that good eyes went up in the air and uh, found his man open. Got it down to Lynch. Two shot foul for Steve Lynch on free throws during the course of the year. Steve Lynch hit 83 percent of his free throws. He missed that one. Carries a 14.5 average. Got it. Ties it up at 14 with 4.06 to play in the first half. Gives him six points on the night. With the ball, John Eisen's for Fulton. Off to Clister. His shot is off. Brought down by Bill Sambrooks for Kalen. Off to Kevin Peterson. The long pass to Lynch. Short jumper is good. Kalen up by two, 16 to 14. Gives Lynch eight points on the night for Kalen. Jim Kenny with the ball into the corner to Workman. Underneath the Miller, tipped up and away. Ron Ackman comes out of there with it. Kirk Pressey's the fellow that made the play on it. To tip it away as Ackerman moves it into the forecourt. For Kalen. Bill Sambrooks. From the free throw line. Off of the end taken by Steve Lynch and a whistle on the play and a foul is called. On number 21, John Eisen's his third personal foul and the fifth on Fulton as a team, and this will be a shooting foul here. Fulton's having a problem. Mike Miller, their only uh, big man, Mike Miller, number 45, really the only uh, big man they've had, and uh, Kanan has been able to use uh, Lynch and Sam Brooks inside on the offensive rebounds. Go up uh, on that particular play. Lynch was fouled. Lynch without the range, and a foul called on the free throw miss, and this time it goes to Kirk Pressey. Pressey picks up his first personal foul of the night for Kalen, and only number two on Kalen as a team in this first half, so there'll be no shot uh, shooting for Fulton. Fulton has shot no free throws as yet, only two personal fouls called against Kalen. This is John Eisens, over to Jim Kenny for Fulton, to Steve Workman, back to Kenny, over to Dale Pooster, over to Kenny in the corner. 
Rebound to Miller. Miller loses it off to Ron Ackerman for Kalen. 16-14. Kalen out in front by two as the sophomore Ron Ackerman moves it into the forecourt for the Knights. Kirk Cressy is number 30. Has the ball tipped away from him. On a good maneuver and a good play. And our man went right out into the crowd but comes back on. That is John or Steve Workman with a bit of hustle. Comes up limping a little bit, but apparently he's all right. Help me up and point me in the right direction. I think I can go. Stay on your feet. You might get a draw. <laughs> Ron Ackerman will put it in play for Kaneland. Kaneland out in front by two, 16-14. Under to Lynch. Brought down on the rebound by Jim Kenny. Kenny moves it up for Fulton. I should say John Eisens to Kenny. Now back to Eisens and back to Kenny. Back to Eisens and around the horn to Workman. He's had a little luck from outside, but none there as Ron Ackland picks it out of the air for Kalen. Ackerman. Off to Lynch to Bill Sambrooks. Can't go anywhere but outside with it. Starts it over again. Ron Ackerman sets it up. This is Steve Lynch, their leading scorer for Kalen, and Kalen out in front, 16-14, 207 to play in the first half. In the lane goes Kirk Cressy with a missed shot, no good. Mark Miller brings it out for Fulton on the rebound. Up to John Eisens. Eisens to Kluster. Bale couldn't find the handle on it. It may have been tipped away. No, it was not. He just couldn't find the handle on it. Kalen will put it in play. Kevin Peterson will work against the press put up by Fulton. A minute 55 to play in the first half. Clock running 16-14, Kalen by two. Coming down is Ron Ackerman to Kevin Cressy. Kirk Cressy. Kevin Peterson. Cressy. Lynch intended for Cressy breaking down the lane. Tipped away by Eisens. Off the floor, Kenny gets it over to Kluster. Back to Kenny and they move it into the forecourt. A minute and a half to play in the first half of this quarterfinal game. A long shot from the corner by Steve Workman is good and ties it at 16 with 124 to play. In the first period, six points for Steve Workman. Kevin Peterson. Off to Lynch. High bounce on the dribble to get away with it. Brought down by Cressy, who missed his shot, got it back, tries again, tried to scoop it up, and is successful. It puts Kalen up by two as Cressy picks up his fifth point <laughs> of the night. And an 18-16 lead for Kalen over Fulton. And Ray Scott, they're just a little slow in getting everything started. A very deliberate kind of basketball these two have played so far. Indeed, a totally different style than we've seen so far, Bob, but, but I am impressed with the way Kalen operates this zone. This, this is a good zone. Kevin Peterson picked up his second personal foul, number three on Caneland as a team. No shots from the free throw line for Fulton as yet. They put it in play out of bounds. John Eisens on the dribble. This is Jim Kenny. Sandbrook couldn't hang on to it. Brought down by Dale Kluster. Tried to go back with it. Kevin Peterson picks up his third personal foul at number four on Caneland as a team. This will be a shooting violation because I think he was in the process of shooting, if I'm not mistaken. Dale Fuster tried to put it back up, and they caught it. And coming into the ball game now for Kalen is Jeff Healy. Kevin Peterson has three personal fouls on him, so he's going to sit down for the remaining 37 seconds of this first half. This is Dale Fuster at the line for Fulton. He's 6'4". He is a senior. The first free throw they have had a chance to make, they made it, and they made their second and tie it at 18. Dale Fuster with a pair of free throws, ties it at 18 with 37 seconds to play in the first half. Kirk Cressy now for Kalen. Works against Steve Workman. Off to Steve Lynch, off to Ron Ackerman. Ackerman working for that last shot. Sam Brooks underneath to Lynch. Moves away from the bucket, gives it off to Healy. Healy, who just came into the ball game, off to Lynch. Underneath to Sam Brooks. 
Can't find anything, and a whistle underneath the bucket, and Dale Kluster is the man who picks up the personal foul. Kluster's first personal foul of the night with 10 seconds to play. A two-shot violation, fouled in the act of shooting. It'll be Bill Sam Brooks at the free throw line. And coming off the floor is Dale Kluster, and then to replace him is number 43, Ken Brinkman. At a forward. Bill Sam Brooks. Fires his first one, Kansas breaks the tie. Kane leads by one, 19-18, with 10 seconds to play in the first half. Get back to Sam Brooks. Mark Miller, Mike Miller coming off with it. Coming up, Kenny to Workman, tipped away by Healy. With time running out and one second showing on the scoreboard clock as Fulton will put it in play midway down in their half of the court. Kenny lobs one high underneath, tried to tip it up and away to Mike Miller. It is no good. And that is the end of the first half of play in this quarterfinal evening round as Kaneland takes in a 19 to 18 one point lead over Fulton. Now Fulton 34% from the field. Fulton shot 1,000. 100% from the free throw line and 500 from Kalen from the free throw line. And Bob, you can see the field goal percentage is 38% and 34%. The defense has been good. That's what has uh, basically caused the low score. Uh, normally, both clubs hit 45, maybe even 50%. You'd have a higher score. Mike Miller gets the tip for Fulton, and the steamers come into the fourth court. With the ball, that is Jim Kenny. Back out to John Eisens. Eisens back over to Kenny. Back out to Wisens. Still try there going against a tough Caneland zone that's keeping him from the outside. Kenny shot is off there, and Bill Sandbrook brings it out for Caneland on the rebound. Jeff Healy is the man who's still in the ballgame. He replaced Kevin Peterson, who had three fouls on him late in the first half. And Peterson stays on the bench, and Healy starts the second half for Caneland. Steve Lynch is the man with the ball for Caneland's Knights. Underneath on the give and go. And Kevin Peterson, or I should say Kirk Cressy, could find no place to go with it. Tried a shot. And a foul is called on Jeff Healy of Caneland. Healy picks up his first personal foul of the night. And number one in this half on Caneland. Putting it in play in the backcourt is Jim Kenny. Off to John Eisens, who moves it up into the forecourt for Fulton. Kenny off to Eisens, back to Workman. Workman has six, goes for eight, gets it. Steve Workman picks up his eighth point of the night and puts Fulton up by one, 20 to 19. Fulton stays on the defense and presses a little bit as Ron Ackerman moves it up for Caneland. Ackerman is not only going to move it all the way up, try a shot, no luck. On the rebound, try is Kirk Cressy, no good. Fought for, taken out by John Eisens for Fulton. Fulton out in front, 20 to 19. We're just into the third period of play in this quarterfinal game. Next, it's Bloomington Central Catholic against Pettis in the final quarterfinal game of the night. Mike Miller underneath for Fulton. Loose ball, Miller gets it back from in the lane. No good. Brought down by uh, Jeff Healy for Kalen. Miller has a problem. Simply because Bobby hasn't handled the ball very often tonight. That's what happens. You get frustrated against a good zone. You don't control the ball. You don't handle it. And then when you get the shots, you shots you normally hit, you can't hit them. After the missed shot, back down the court comes Fulton. The kick is charged against Ron Ackerman. So Fulton will put it in play out of bounds. One thing you'll notice that Kaneland allows Fulton to get shots deep in the corner. Uh, now that's fine, except that that is the, probably the lowest percentage shot on the floor right there. They've gotten four or five shots there, but they're tough to hit them. Miller again can't find the range from along the baseline. The foul is called on Steve Workman. Workman picks up his second personal foul of the night and number one in this half on Fulton. No shot involved here. Ron Ackerman will put it in play for Caneland. Fulton by one, 20 to 19. Kirk Cressy with the ball in the backcourt. For Kaneland. The man on the defense is Jim Kenny. There you saw behind the back dribble, and people used to say, oh, that's uh, that's showboat. Well, not anymore. Not with those pressing defenses where the defensive man is taught to get out in front. That's a very good sound maneuver today, and the young players can make it. The fellow you used to play with did that about better than anybody I can ever remember. Bob Cousy. He, he's pretty tough. A turnover again as Fulton will put it in play on the backcourt. Fulton 20, Caneland 19. 
Inbounding is Jim Kenny. Off to John Eisen. Eisen is trying to find someone open. It's Mike Miller underneath. Partially blocked on a good play by Lynch. Miller gets it back. Follows. Mike Miller finally picks up a couple of points. He's had a tough go. Then he leads the band from Fulton as they build up a three-point edge, 22 to 19. It's timeout in the third quarter with the score of Fulton 22, Caneland 19. 19 seconds to play in the third period. Fulton 24, Caneland 21. Good control, but out of bounds. Off Lynch and off Workman, they'll jump again. Fulton has six points in the third period. Caneland has two points in the third period. Eight have been scored in this third period. And well on our way to possibly the lowest scoring game in Class A tournament history. And this is second year. Jim Kenny for Fulton. Out to Jim Borgman. Borgman back over to Jim Kenny. Pops the outsider off the rim. Taken by Miller. Follow. Can't do it. Followed by Workman. It is no good, and Steve Lynch can't get it. It comes out to Fred Cressy as Sam Brooks fires one well out of bounds. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Fulton 24, Caneland 21. Five seconds for local station identification. Channel 4, WHBF-TV, Rock Island. Set to go into the fourth and final period of play in this quarterfinal game between Fulton and Caneland. Fulton in the white, Caneland in the dark. Fulton by three points, 24-21. A very low scoring quarterfinal game. Tip is controlled by Fulton. Miller tipping it back to Kenny off to Jim Borgman. Now to Jim Kenny. Kenny to Borgman. Off to Kluster. Can't find a handle. Loses the ball and Caneland takes over on the turnover. Mention again, Chicago Christian holds the lowest point total in Class A play, 51 points scored last year. Ron Ackerman now for Caneland. Down to Steve Lynch, trying to find Sam Brooks underneath, but maybe too far underneath. Nope, he got a back up off the backboard and in. Pulls Caneland to within one on Bill Sam Brooks' field goal. 24-23, Caneland down by one. Workman from the corner, underneath to Miller. And a whistle on the play, and Steve Lynch picks up the personal foul for Kalen. His second personal foul of the night. And number three on Kaneland as a team in the second half. But the uh, foul coming in the process of shooting for Mike Miller. So Miller goes to the free throw line to shoot two. 7.26 to play in the ballgame. Fulton 24. Kaneland 23. The second one is good, makes it 25-23. As Fulton is up by two. Mike Miller has scored on an average of 17.9 per game during the season, so this is well below his scoring average. Bill Sam Brooks almost has it taken away off to Kevin Peterson. Rebound fought for, and it will go out of bounds off both Steve Workman and Kirk Cressy, so they'll bring it back to the free throw line to jump. See if they get the tip back. Normally in a situation like this, you'd like to tip it back, get to the open man. You'll always find, usually you'll find two men on one seam will be open. That's where they try to get a tip. They did it. It was very successful. Ball comes back out of the forecourt to Kevin Peterson, to Sam Brooks, underneath to Lynch. Partially blocked, but he got it up over Mike Miller. Picked up a pair. Lynch picking up his eighth, ninth point of the night. Over to Jim Borgman for Fulton. Borgman to Dale Kluster. Kluster, long cross court pass. Kenny tipped away and out of bounds by Kirk Pressy for Kalen. It'll be Fulton's ball to put in play. And John Eisens comes back off the Fulton bench to replace Jim Borgman for the Fulton Steamers with 6.40 to play in the ball game. And Fulton up in a tie 25 25 with Kalen. John Eisens to Jim Kenny. Back to John Eisens. To Dale Clusters, he's hemmed in. Tries to force his way in, loses the ball. Ron Ackerman picks it up. And you just can't force your way into places that uh, they don't want you to go, really. Well, you get by one man, and then you the, the trap occurs, and you run into two or three other men. That's the beauty of the zone. Kirk Pressey. 
breaks the tie, puts Kalen up by two, 27-25. Cressy, his ninth point of the night. Handling for Fulton now. Down to Clusters, up to Eisens, finds a little opening, pops the left-hander, and it's off there, no good. Steve Workman rebounds for Fulton. Follows with his own shot and ties it up again at 27. 5.50 to play in the ball game. All knotted at 27 apiece. Kirk Cressy. Ten points for Steve Workman tonight for Fulton on that last bucket. Out to Ron Ackerman. Back to Cressy. Looks for Sam Brooks' hand waving underneath. Gets it to him. Sam Brooks tight underneath. And he is fouled in the process by Jim Kenny. The basket will count. The basket does count. And picking up the foul is Steve Workman, his third of the night. And that sets the fans wild as far as Fulton is concerned. It's timeout in the fourth quarter with the score. Caneland 29, Fulton 27. 29, Fulton 27. At the free throw line, Bill Sambrooks for Caneland. They lead by two. Five minutes, 35 seconds to play in the ball game. This young man that's had some problems with his knees, you'll see, uh, if you get a long shot of him, he's got one brace on his right knee, his left knee is taped. Bello with the rebound for Fulton. Score remains 29-27. Kalen by two. John Eisen's up court for Fulton. Jim Kenny. At one time, they held a three-point lead in the second half, but that has been the biggest lead in the second half. And Fulton held it by three. Shot is brought down by Steve Lynch on the rebound for Kalen. Out to Ron Ackerman. The lead pass to Sam Brooks on the cherry picker, and he has it for two. 31-27, Kalen by four, five minutes to play in the ball game. The biggest lead in the second half for either club, and a four-point lead for Kalen now. Kenny shot, low and away. You'll notice, Bob, that uh, Fulton has not been getting any shots inside. They've been trying to go over the zone. They've been taking the poor percentage shots. Sam Brooks has certainly taken over. Started to make his weight felt now as he's hit three straight now. A couple of free throws and two buckets gives him 13 points on the night. And now, with four minutes, 42 seconds to play in the ball game, Kalen is up by 6, 33, 27. But not as much as they need, and Miller has to be underneath, and he has to help them underneath, and Kalen just, quite frankly, has kept them from getting the ball to it. Jim Kenny will put the ball in play as he takes it from referee Biff Bob Wright. Kenny down to Steve Workman. Back out to John Eisens to Clusters from the corner. It is Kenny. Can't find the range. Once again, the poor percentage shot. Ryan Ackerman for Kalen moving up, still in the backcourt. 33 27, Kalen by six. Off to Sam Brooks again. The pass to Lynch goes right through his hands and out of bounds. Another turnover. The one they can ill afford to have. This thing is far from out of reach with 4.15 to play on a six-point edge. John Eisen's coming up. A little grim face on the coach as he sees things transpiring here. Kenny around the horn. Eisen's back out to Kenny. Rebound is taken by Kevin Peterson. Peterson playing with three personal fouls. Lead pass out to Sam Brooks. Found it going away for two. On the triple, 35-27. Kalen now by eight points with 3.42 to play as Kalen moved ahead by eight over Fulton. 15 points for Bill Sam Brooks. And that is over his per game average for the year. The shot put up by Kuster is so good. Kuster hurt his leg a little bit, I think, when he went up and came down on the shot. Kevin Peterson off to Ackerman. Ackerman back out to Peterson. Kalen moving it around to Sam Brooks. Back over to Lynch or to, uh, I should say, Cressy. Rebound taken out by Mike Miller. And a foul is called on number 12, Kevin Peterson. As he set the block there and uh, really didn't have possession of the territory here, McCauley. That's his fourth personal foul of the night. And number four on Kalen as a team. Personal fouls on Kevin Peterson. Eisen's off to Kenny. His shot is out of there and off. No good. Rebound to Steve Lynch. Off to 
that Kevin Peterson stays in the ball game at the three minute block now in this final quarter 35 27 Kalen up by eight over Fulton quarterfinal action from Champaign Urbana the Assembly Hall in Class A Illinois State High School basketball championship play now Fulton has gone into the uh, trap zone come up with a jump ball it's a change of defense for them they had been in a man to man now they make a substitution also coming in is Cal Swanson number 23 going out is Dale Kluster probably to try to get some more speed in the lineup somebody was in the circle no well, apparently they, they got the tip the anyway. right. they got the tip anyway Bob so it's uh, Kenny puts it in play to John Eisens we're 240 to play in the ball game Swanson all the way out in front to Kenny makes it 35 29 Fulton now within six with two and a half minutes to play in the ball game eight points for Jim Kenny tonight off to Steve Lynch Lynch back out to Kevin Peterson or Kalen to Bill Sambrooks that is his 17th point of the night Bill Sambrooks he has six field goals in this fourth period 37 29 Kalen out in front shot blocked by Lynch Lynch got him on the arm we say George Burkett finds that unbelievable. It'll be a two shot violation. Mike Miller goes to the free throw line for Fulton. Down by eight. 37 29. 207 to play. Miller's first. Makes it 37 30. Fulton trying to creep back up on this lead that Kalen has built up in the fourth period. 37-31. Cans them both. Mike Miller with nine points on the night. Kevin Peterson up for Kalen. Over to Ron Ackerman. We're down inside the two-minute mark. 158 to play to Bill Sambrooks. This follows and gets it. He has seven field goals in the fourth period. And he has 19 points on the night. 18 points for Bill Sambrooks. John Eisen puts it up for Fulton. Loose ball underneath the bucket of foul also in the lane under the bucket and Steve Lynch is the man who picks it up. For Steve Lynch that is his third personal foul of the night and a shooting violation here. One in one situation now as Mike Miller. Ray Scott as we had uh, more or less thought it might turn into a low scoring game and it has done exactly that. The follow shot is made this time as Steve Workman gets the two. It's at 39, 33, Fulton within six. A minute and 25 seconds to play. Kalen on the offense. Over to Ackerman. Over to Peterson. Underneath to Sambrooks. Good give and go. Off to Steve Lynch. They missed the bucket, but a whistle on the play and the foul is called underneath the bucket. Picking it is Jim Kenny. Takes his second personal foul of the night, and George Burkett looks at the clock and can't wait for it to run out with a minute 18 to play. He calls his people off to the sideline. As we were saying, Ray Scott, we thought it perhaps would be a low-scoring ball game, and it's been that. Uh, probably more of a low-scoring ball game than we thought, perhaps. Both clubs scored in the 30s to get here, and they are in the 30s right now. Right. It's actually it's been an interesting game as far as... I think one of the reasons... One of the reasons, I think, Bob, is the fact that it is obvious that this Kalen team has spent more than the average amount of time on defense. They just seem to know everything that they're doing in this zone. They have really been well coached in it. On the other hand, uh, they are also, uh, when they get down the other end of the floor, I think working that hard on defense has caused them to almost uh, think in such a deliberate way offensively. It's just a plain deliberate team. If they were to go on to win here, it'd be interesting to see how they would make out against a team that loves to put it up and right. run and shoot. The horn calls them back out of the floor with a minute and 18 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. Hainland, 39. Fulton, 33. At the free throw line, it'll be Steve Lynch. Steve Lynch at the free throw line. Nine points on the night for Steve Lynch. Two shot violation goes for number 10 and 11, possibly. Takes him out, put it down again, and hits it. 40, 33. 
unless a lot happens in the remaining minute and 18 seconds, we have a new low scoring record for Class A tournament play. That's an unusual way to shoot free throws. Missed it. Steve Workman on the rebound for Fulton. 40 33. Fulton down by seven. Kenny looking, being harassed out front. Gives off to Workman. Underneath to Miller. Got it. 40 35. Mike Miller picking up the two pointer for Fulton. Time continues to run. One minute to play in the ball game. Hanlon 40. Fulton 35. 11 points for Mike Miller. Very deliberate style of play. Sam Brooks has it tipped away from him. And out of bounds. Off. Hanlon. Fulton gets a chance to creep within three, maybe. John Eisen's down court. Underneath on the drive is Cal Swanson. Turnover. Kevin Peterson puts it in play for Caitlin. 40-35. 45 seconds to play in the ball game. Kevin Peterson with the basketball. Up to Lynch. Almost double teamed him. Gets it back to Peterson. They're working it way out front. Off to Ackerman. Time ticks away. 35 seconds. 30 seconds to play in the ball game. 40-35. Caitlin over Fulton. Quarterfinal round. Out to Ackerman. Underneath to Lynch. Almost broken up. Tipped up and away, but into the hands of Kevin Peterson. Content to go underneath to Sam Brooks on a give and go up to Steve Lynch. And traveling violation is called. There is no bucket. The basket does not count. Bolton takes over out of bounds and back towards 16 seconds to play in this quarterfinal game. A timeout is called by Bolton with 16 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock and Kalen out in front, 40 to 35. Fulton. In the next ball game here tonight, Bloomington Central Catholic will be taking on Venice, which one would imagine to be a higher scoring game. A shot of some of the 15,000 fans that are here tonight, Ray Scott. And I guess as old as you get and as many things as you cover in this business, there's nothing like a high school state tournament. It is, it's just wonderful, Bob. And you know, an interesting thing, I was looking at the scoring in the Tuesday night super sectional games and among other interesting things Brett Browning who scored 45 points to set a class A tournament scoring record and came within I guess three of tying either classification was able to hit only five of 14 shots from the floor on Tuesday night wound up with 13 points and here he is under all of this pressure in this assembly hall with a 45 point effort and every game has had one scoring star for one team so far of the victorious team and Bill Sabrooks in the fourth period has been the difference in this ball game. he's hit seven out of eight from the field in the fourth period John Eisen's for Fulton time ticks away down to the 10 second mark underneath to Miller puts it up in one motion can't get it loses it coming out with it is Kevin Peterson and a foul is called on Mike Miller as he's trying to retain possession the foul is on Mike Miller Mike picks up his fourth personal foul of the night it'll be a shooting violation and a timeout call now by George Burkett he wants to talk to his Caneland Knights with a five point edge 40 35 but getting back to what we were talking about Ray Scott Sam Brooks has been the difference in this ball game because he's the guy that kind of broke it open as far as Caneland was concerned he had seven out of eight in this fourth period we had Jack Sickman's performance in the opening game today of 36 points and a tournament record breaking 24 rebounds and we had Browning's outstanding performance and here you have Sam Brooks who had a uh, a very disappointing first half I know for him with only five points but he has been the absolute difference here in the second half with his ability to hit in close so uh, I'd have to say with what we've seen so far some most interesting semifinal pairings have been set up for tomorrow and I'm very anxious to see Bloomington Central Catholic and Venice that's the one that's coming up and you'll see it Bloomington Central Catholic and Venice, the last quarterfinal game of the evening here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. Trotting back out, number 25 is Steve Workman for Fulton. And these two have gone at it tooth and nail from start to finish. It has been a low-scoring game, a lot of defense, a lot of harassment on the part of both defensive players. Kevin Peterson goes to the free throw line for Caneland. Six seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Did you see it? <laughs> Peterson's free throw is good. And 
that is his first point of the night. Kevin Peterson, who has played practically the entire ball game, with the exception of just a few moments late in the first half and early going in the second half because of foul problems. It's a pair, gets two points, makes it 42-35. Seven-point edge for Kalen. With the ball is Keith Reynolds, who just came in at the timeout. The shot is up, and it is no good, and that is the end of the ball game. With Kalen winning this quarterfinal game by a score of 42 to 35 over Fulton. And now, here is Ray Scott. Okay, Bob. Kalen came into tonight's quarterfinal game with a record of 19 wins and 11 losses. But their supporters were very quick to point out that they lost only one game to a Class A team. Their other defeats were to Class AA competition. So conceivably, playing against that tougher competition paid its dividends tonight with this 42 to 35 victory over Fulton. Now let's switch down to Ed McCauley in Tournament Central. Thank you, Ray. We have plenty of interesting events coming up between the games. Among them will be a detailed discussion on the fine points of basketball rules. Also, we'll have some interviews for you with some of the fans here at the tournament. But first, Bob Starr will be bringing you a summary on that last game right after this. We have our third quarterfinal game out of the way now. And it was a tight one, a low-scoring game, as we expected. As a matter of fact, it set a tournament record. Chicago Christian scored the lowest total in Class A play last year with 51 points. And now that record, unfortunately, I suppose, belongs to Fulton with only 35 points scored here tonight and a 42-35 loss to Kainland. So Kainland moves into the semifinal round. And oddly enough, it took them a good full three periods to decide who was going to win the ball game. And it was Bill Sambrooks for Kainland that made the difference. He's their 6-5 center. He came up with 19 points on the night. He had seven out of eight from the field in the fourth period alone. And that is what opened the door for Kainland to pick up the victory here this evening in this quarterfinal play with a 42-35 win over Fulton. Let's check over the scoring as we have it. Looking over the totals, Kirk Cressy for Kainland wound up with nine points on the night. But he had five of those points in the first half. Steve Lynch, who was their leading scorer with a 17-point-plus average per game, came up with nine points, ten points on the night. Check that. And Sam, Bill Sambrooks, came up with 19 points on the evening. As I pointed out, he got most of those in the second half, 14 in the second half, as a matter of fact, with 19 points, and that was the door opener for Caneland. Two points for Ron Ackerman and two points for Kevin Peterson on the night for Caneland for the losing Fulton Steamers.